the following decreases in length during a muscle contraction. Now, during a muscle contraction, now if you look at the sarcomere, sarcomere is present between the two Z lines. And attached to the sarcomere are the thin filaments, which is actin. And you have the myosin, which are your thick filaments. So if you look at the bands which are present in the skeletal muscle, you've got a dark band, which consists of the myosin plus the overlapped actin, which is also known as the A band. And you have a light band. Uh, remember, half of light, light band lies in one sarcomere and half lies in a neighboring sarcomere. In fact, if you look at the sarcomere, it is half of I band plus A band plus half of I band. Now, during a muscle contraction, the two Z lines will come closer together. The I band slides into the A band. So which of the following is going to decrease in length? This is going to be the I band. The A band, in fact, remains unchanged. The A band remains unchanged. There is also something known as the edge zone. Now, which is the edge zone? Edge zone is a lighter area within the A band, and this consists of only myosin. What happens to the edge zone during a muscle contraction? The edge zone also shortens and may even disappear. Let's have a look at the next question. Now, this says a 45-year-old woman has a mass in the cella turcica that compresses the hypothalamic hypofacial portal vessels, disrupting the flow of uh, flow from hypothalamus to pituitary. So obviously, when it is disrupting the flow, that means all the hypothalamic hormones cannot reach the pituitary. The secretion rate of which of the following hormones is likely to increase? Now, if you look at the, the hypothalamic hypofacial axis, the hypothal hypothalamus secretes a number of releasing hormones and two inhibiting hormones, which affect the secretion of the anterior pituitary. Now, the releasing hormones which are secreted from the hypothalamus are CRH, corticotropin releasing hormone, which will increase the secretion of ACTH from the anterior pituitary. TRH, thyrotropin releasing hormone, which will increase the secretion of TSH from the anterior pituitary. Then uh, GnRH, gonadotropin releasing hormone, which secretes increases the secretion of FSH and LH from the anterior pituitary. Growth hormone releasing hormone, which increases the secretion of growth hormone from the anterior pituitary. And two inhibiting hormones, which are the two inhibiting hormones. Uh, there is somatostatin. Somatostatin. This reduces growth hormone secretion and prolactin inhibiting factor which reduces prolactin. Now please remember as far as growth hormone is concerned, growth hormone is mainly under the control of GnRH, not somatostatin. So if the blood supply between the between the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary is disrupted, which hormone is going to show an increase? This is going to be prolactin. Prolactin will show an increase. Prolactin is the only one which will show an increase. All the others will decrease. <clears throat> Let's look at the next one. Now, this says release of which of the following is an example of neuroendocrine secretion. Now, when you talk in terms of neuroendocrine secretion, there are these magnocellular uh, cellular neurons which are present in two nuclei of the hypothalamus, which are called supraoptic and paraventricular nuclei, supraoptic and the paraventricular nuclei. Now, uh, these two nuclei are cells of these neurons of these two nuclei are involved in neuroendocrine uh, secretion. And uh, the two hormones which are secreted by these nuclei are ADH and oxytocin. Five-sixths of ADH comes from the supraoptic, one-sixth of ADH comes from paraventricular. Oxytocin, it's reversed, five-sixths comes from paraventricular and one-sixth from supraoptic. So uh, which of, this is a rather simple question, which of the following is an example of endocrine secretion? This is going to be oxytocin. Uh, let's look at the next question. It says, in controlling the fine muscles of hands and fingers, corticospinal A axon synapse primarily with which of the following? Now, corticospinal uh, axons, corticospinal axons will arise from uh, 
the primary motor cortex, the large pyramidal cells in the primary motor cortex, which is area four, the premotor and supplementary motor areas, and also the sensory cortex, premotor and the supplementary motor areas, and also from the sensory cortex. But please remember, from the sensory cortex, you have motor neurons, which are arising from here. These are not sensory neurons. These are motor neurons arising from the sensory cortex. Sensory cortex, in fact, contributes 30% of fibers, premotor and motor supplementary motor areas, another 30%, primary motor cortex, 40% of the fibers. Now, these fibers pass through the internal capsule and innervate the anterior horn cells in the anterior part of the spinal cord, in the anterior horn of the spinal cord. These are also known as the um, spinal motor neurons. These are also known as the A alpha motor neurons, right? Uh, these are, like I said, the cell bodies are present in the anterior horn of the spinal cord. The axon emerges from the the anterior root and joins the spinal nerve to supply the muscles. Renshaw cells, these are small inhibitory neurons. These are small inhibitory neurons which are also present in the anterior horn. But these Renshaw cells are involved in feedback inhibition of the spinal motor neurons. Let's have a look at question number five. Now this says sweat glands and piloerector muscles of the skin are innervated by which of the following which of the following fibers? The answer to this is sympathetic cholinergic. So this is going to be postganglionic cholinergic and sympathetic fibers. Postganglionic sympathetic fibers secrete norepinephrine, but the postganglionic sympathetic fibers to the sweat glands and to the piloerector muscles secrete acetylcholine. Question number six, in a muscle spindle receptor, which of the following detects rate of change of muscle length? Now, in a muscle spindle, you have what are known as the intrafusal muscle fibers. And these intrafusal muscle fibers are of two types. There is the nuclear bag fiber, where the nuclei are in a dilatation in the center, and the nuclear chain fiber, where the nuclei are in one line. The nuclear bag fiber is further subdivided into nuclear bag dynamic and the nuclear bag static. Now, what do I mean by uh, dynamic? Dynamic means it detects rate of change of muscle length, the velocity of change of muscle length. The nuclear bag static and nuclear chain, nuclear chain is also for a static response. Nuclear bag static and the nuclear chain both detect a steady length. So the answer to this question, which of the following detects rate of change of muscle length? My answer is dynamic nuclear back. Let's look at the next question. Position sets, proprioception. Now proprioceptive input is extremely important uh, for uh, extremely important not only for as far as the sensory system is concerned but also for the motor output feedback from proprioceptors is extremely important so let's see this position sense involves muscle spindles golgi tendon organs and which of the following now what is involved in position sense are not just the muscle spindles which detect the uh, muscle length the golgi tendon organs which detect the muscles tension but also the skin tactile receptors and the joint capsule receptors all of these contribute towards position sets. Let's look at the next question. A stroke that destroys the respiratory area of the medulla would lead to which of the following? Now, when I say respiratory area of the medulla, this consists, consists of two set of neurons, which are called the dorsal respiratory group of neurons and the ventral respiratory group of neurons. These constitute the respiratory center. Now, if the respiratory center itself is affected, it will lead to an immediate cessation of breathing. Remember, the respiratory center may be, uh, the output of the respiratory center may be modified by pontine centers or by higher centers or by input from peripheral and central chemoreceptors. But if the respiratory center itself is destroyed, there will be immediate cessation of breathing. 